Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Great Awakening Generator. I am Rose McNair, and today I have with me Christina Richter. Hello, Christina. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Rose. That's good. So good that you've made some time for us to come and talk to us today about your work as a medical astrologer and international author. Right. So now we're not talking too much about the international author, but we will conclude with talking about your books. Now, before we go into the interview, everybody, I was asked to give Christina some light language before we proceed today. And I guess when coming into the space, I'm going to invite all of us to take a moment to breathe. And we will close our eyes. Kia hulkatana kofaheta. Welcome, beautiful Christina. Welcome, and as we come back from our breath thank you thank you everyone thank you Christina for giving me the opportunity and for being open to it Okay, shall we carry on? Well, Christina, please tell us a little bit about yourself first before we go into, before we dive right in and ask you all about this astrology stuff that you're so excited about. Tell us about you. Well, other than the fact that I'm a practicing astrologer. <laughs> yes, there you go. Well, are. actually, I don't do There's much There's life else. outside of um, that, I'm sure. I don't do much else. That's what I love to do. It's my passion. I've spent most of my life um, gearing, most of my life in health. I was a nurse for 35 years. I studied Ayurveda for 10 years. I did um, energy healing and studied energy healing for four years and practiced as well as being a massage therapist and aromatherapist and a herbalist and a color therapist and yada yada so it can go on. But what I really, really have got my passion, what really, really ignites my soul is the astrology and doing it with in combining astrology with my passion for health. It just gives a um, it's just a unique perspective on how to look at the body using yeah. the astrology chart. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of other things I like. Um, lo love my cat, my partner. Um, you notice I put the cat first. <laughs> I noticed, uh, and I understand. I'm a cat lady too, a crazy oh, one. Yeah, so you get it. Okay, cool. He he, he doesn't mind because he loves he loves our cat as much as I do. Um, and um, I travel around the country. I I, I reside in Napier, New Zealand, Sunny Hawks Bay, and I spend um, six to eight months of the year traveling around New Zealand, um, doing workshops, doing talks, going to fairs um you know doing sessions for people people know when I'm coming and they book in and off I go mm -hmm. get in the car and off I go I really enjoy that okay. I really enjoy getting away and having that time away and even though I'm going for work I it's an opportunity for me to catch up with um, like-minded souls that I meet along the way and then I catch up when I return and it's a bit of time for me as well because I am a Uranian and in astrology, that means um, a Uranian is somebody who is either born in the sign Aquarius or born with their sun, moon or ascendant, um, having strong aspects to the planet Uranus. And basically, that means these are people who are independent, who like to be doing their own thing, their own way and need time alone. Okay. 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 As much as they're, you know, it doesn't matter whether you've got families or whatever, but they like that time alone. And for me, getting in the car and driving four hours or six hours or two hours, that's my time alone, you yeah. know, in the car, putting the music up, singing, <laughs> driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yes. It's, it's a, it's, it, for me, that's my time out. I think it's an ideal life, really. <laughs> well, you know, it took me my whole life to get here. So. Yeah, yeah. You've got so much experience and you've delved in so many things. And I, I, I keep hearing from the things that you were saying and the, the little bit that I know of you and I've been trying, you know, obviously looking at your work online. I feel like there is that, there's this holistic sense of things going on because you've got that background as a nurse, but you also have this astrology. So you're understanding the movements of the celestial bodies and, and what we're doing here in this space and time. But you, you, you've talked about wellness. You've talked about, I think you, you've talked about spirit. Um, you know, do you think astrologers are meant to be uh, this uh, naturally this way that they delve into astrology but then they start to see health and they start to see uh, spirituality and they start to see wellness in it um do you think that's the, that's the thing that most astrologers do i see it as a medical astrologer okay. but if you talk to a financial astrologer okay they might see the health and wellness of your finances but okay. not necessarily the health and wellness of your body okay. or body or bodies because I include the spirit body when it comes to health as much as the physical body I like to explain it like you want to become a doctor you go in and, and you do your internship so you start astrology by learning all the basics and then when you finish everything you um, kind of decide where you're going to go or whether you you, you choose to stay a, um, a mundane astrologer I studied astrology with the great Maggie Kerr from um, Australia and um, she is um, absolutely amazing uh, Maggie Kerr K-E-R-R -R, and I started psychological astrology with her after I had done all my basics and that just kind of led me into everything else and then um, and then I um, once I had finished everything and it was, it was quite funny it was around about the time I was looking to do extra studies in Ayurveda, but they cancelled the course. And I realised, because by that time I had been to India several times, I've been about 14 times in total, and I lived there for a while, and I studied at the Ayurvedic Academy there. Um, and it was around about that time I was beginning to realise that everything happens for a reason. Yeah, and I, I know everybody says that, but when you actually start to see it in real time, it makes you pause and it makes you think. So even though I I had done my level one Ayurveda and I was really keen to go forward, um, they had cancelled the course and I kind of went, well, what else was I meant? To, what else am I meant to be doing? And then I realised I was meant to be advancing my astrology knowledge, which I did for that year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was great. I would think I went through something like four levels and four courses in one year or something. And I, I, I was just full on. Yeah. Yeah. You know how people go to the pub with their girlfriends? <laughs> well, I kind of did that in my 20s. Yeah. Uh, whereas when I was hitting all the books in my 40s and 50s, um, well, 30s and 40s, I should say, then for me, um, um, time out was like, you know, talking with like-minded astrologers and working things out with the mm. charts and that mm. kind of thing. And that's where I got my buzz on. Okay. Wow. That sounds awesome. Now, mm. I, I know we're talking astrology and we, we, we mentioned physic, um, um, psychological astrology and medical astrology. Please, for anybody who may not be familiar with us, can you give us just like a couple of lines on what is astrology and what is medical astrology? Because that's what you're specializing on, you said. Okay. So this is my version and my opinion. Everybody will have their own um, slant on this. And this is what I believe. We are souls reincarnated into a physical body. We are, we've chosen to come here not only to have chocolate and ice cream, which well, I know is bad for you on the health sector, but my God, it's so nice. I know, it's so good. But we're here to have a spiritual, uh, we're here to grow spiritually through the evolution of our bodies. Yes. Which is why sometimes when people become unwell, I don't necessarily see it as a illness, uh, depending on what I'm seeing in the chart. It can be a catalyst for their own evolution. There are so many people that have gone off and had various diseases and then they've turned around and they've been um, 
um, uh, they've opened foundations here and they've done research here. Like, you know, like it's a, it's a general story. You can pick it up anywhere. Um, so why do we need astrology? I mean, I believe that as a soul, you have, you make a soul contract before you, um, in part and enter your new body at the time that you, uh, are born is the most specific time because that's the time you take your first breath and that is the time the cast is the chart is cast for your life and even though the chart is um 12 signs and 12 houses and 10 planets and many 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 asteroids and fixed stars which we're not going to go into in this in, in today um it, it can actually chart the course of your life because the chart moves the chart is not a it, the chart is not static. It's not um, fixed, I should say. As, a, as you evolve, all the planets move, some by one degree, some by more every year. So um, you're reading um, a new version of you as you tend to evolve, as the chart moves. So I find astrology, the way I explain astrology in a nutshell is it is our... For those who know a bit of finance, and of course I studied finance and I studied financial astrology, funnily enough, and I was going to be a stockbroker at one point and then using using astrology. And then um, the guides said to me, go and look at your birth chart. When I looked at my birth chart, it was clear that even though um, I probably would have made a really good stockbroker, but my purpose was health. Um, I, I had too many signatures in the chart that showed it. So I, you know, um, it's um, thy will, not my will. So I follow, followed the, um, what the chart indicated for me. And, you know, I've got all this health knowledge. So um, I feel that as the chart moves, you, you know, you move, you, 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 uh, you, you grow with your chart, you evolve with what's going on. There are new phases in your life. There are ending phases and it's all can be dictated in the chart. Wow, I like that explanation. The mm. birth chart is everything, isn't it? It is. I say to people, if you... Oh, I might share a very quick story. Sure. I was in... Uh, well, it was one of my trips to India, and I met the king and queen of Rajput. They were friends of friends, and when they found out I was an astrologer, they wanted to meet me, because in India, astrology is really, really big. Yes. It's bigger than being a doctor. Yeah. Uh, and if... You're an astrologer. People want to track you down. Well, anyway, the king was an Aquarian. So no astrology. I just did the numerology. And with what I knew about Aquarius, I gave him a little um, synopsis of himself, just based right. on the numerology and based on on his um, the sign he was born. And then I came to the queen and um, I said, you know, she was asked, you know, in um, translation, would you like to do your chart? And she turns around and she says, no. She said, I'm Scorpio. If she gets to do me, she'll know everything about me and I'm not ready to go there. <laughs> and Scorpios are very secretive and very private. They do yeah. not like people to know yeah. about who they are and what they are. And it's yeah. like, I, I really had a little chuckle when I heard that. <laughs> she and I, we got on like a house on fire. <laughs> wow. Yes, the birth chart is thing. everything. Mm. Mm. You're right. So that was just a little story. Yeah, no, so, that's good. Um, that's good. So I always say if, you know, um, I know who you are by the chart that you have. Right. Yeah, wow. That's well, what gets me is that so many people have lived life ignorantly and not even taken astrology into that kind of seriousness. You know, it's, it's probably become, I know astrology has been around for, what, thousands of years, obviously. Thousands of and, years. And, you know, it's gone way back to yeah. the Egyptian times and before. Yeah, and having ha having Indian descent, I know that when we were born, the parents always went to the priest because the priest would tell us about, would get, tell them, you know, whether it was an auspicious time of birth or they, did they need to do a ceremony to clear any bad karma or whatever. The priest would also give the name for the child. Or yes, based on the chart, because on the, the, chart. the name yeah. and the energy of the chart needs to be in synastry or in connection with each other in order yeah. for each to yeah. flourish. 
And that's why the name of a child is so important. It's so important to understand the name before you give the name that you're giving the right one and that it's, it matches the chart. So I, it's been in my world all this time. But what I'm amazed is that even as time has gone by, even my family have moved away from that because they've, they've become more Western in the way they're thinking and living. And, um, I, you know, it's, it's, there are people that will, will be on this planet, will live and die on this planet, and then they will still not have had their astrology, would not have had anything, any touch with it. So mm, that's, that's an interesting actually, one. And, and that's okay. Because yeah. the way I see it, we all take in knowledge how we need to understand and take it in. I mean, I'm, I'm dyslexic. So for me to learn something new is, um, it's very, very challenging. And, and it was for me at school, very, very challenging. Like I was diagnosed, well, I was never diagnosed. I worked out I was dyslexic. I mean, by the time I did all my research and studied, I realized that's what I was. Yeah. But in my day, um, when I went to school in the um, in the 60s, you know, there were, that, it wasn't known. Yeah, it wasn't known that was so you just put in the dumb class and you weren't expected to really succeed in life. But when I came across astrology, everything was symbolism. And it was like, Oh, my God, it's a language I yeah. get it's a language I can do in my head. And I am telling you, not everybody can do that. Obviously, yeah. other, other astrologers can. But my sister, for example, who's a ex lawyer, she, she always says to me, she doesn't know how I do what I do. Exactly. Right? Exactly, and I th I feel everybody will gravitate to how they are meant to grow and learn, and how they are meant to be challenged. Astrology, what I like about it is what I didn't answer before, but I say to people that it's the SWOT analysis of life, and in um finances, SWOT S W O T stands yes. for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and astrology can give you all of that. Yeah. Plus, I really love how you answered my question. I've got to say, because I, I love that you didn't turn it. You, you didn't turn around and say, "Well, those people, well, they've lost something." You no, basically I don't said, "Everybody that. learns." We can't have. We can't have. Yeah. Whether we knew the astrology or not, we can't have. Whether we didn't, mm. you know, whether we looked at the birth chart or not, we can't have lost it because nothing is irrelevant. Everything is relative and relevant in our lives, ordained yep. on this planet, right? Orchestrated on the planet. So, let's go back to medical astrology you know because this to me is comes up with okay so why do we i know that how does it work and why do we need it well you it's the same inform you know you use the same information but you look at it from an astrological medical point of view rather than a mundane or a financial or a psychological or a relationship point of view Right. People don't realize that the planets have um, many functions. Yeah. Like as much as Mars, for example, is the planet of action, drive, male, sex, sexuality, um, male in, in general, sex in general. Um, it's also the planet of infection and inflammation. And it can mask and rule things like the adrenals, for example, if it's a rulership with Aries, um, you know, things like that. So, again, you don't speak French if you're living in Greece. You speak Greek. Yeah. So depending on what you're looking for, you 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 um, focus or you hone in on what you need with the language that goes with it. If you're looking at the chart financially, you would never use inflammation and infection as part of your analysis if you're working with Mars, for example. It has a different, it, it, it plays a different role. Yeah. Very similar energy, but a different role. Yeah. Okay. So again, it's like, it, it, it depends on what you're looking at. Yeah. Right. So if I had, if I was feeling unwell and I came to you and I said, Hey, Christina, I'm feeling really unwell. I've got inflammation in my joints. And this is actually okay. true of me. All right. All right. Let's just um, stop right there. Yeah. I get this a lot. They ring me up and they say, da, da, da. So what I do is I grab my trusty book and pen, which is always very close to me. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I'm hearing you and you said, I'm feeling unwell. So the first thing I would be looking for is what's happening to the sun. The sun rules your vitality and your physical body. <sighs> So I make a note, I go, I just put the sun with the dot in the middle. And then you said you've got inflammation and I'm going, oh, hello. So that's Mars. Mm -hmm. So then I put the Mars symbol 
you've yeah. got inflammation. So I am looking for a Mars transit affecting the sun, <laughs> which is causing this inflammation. And then you said you've got pain in the joints. The joints and the, and, okay, pain can be ruled by Mars or Saturn. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the bones are ruled by Capricorn and Saturn. Wow. So if there is a play going on between the sun, the sun, Mars and Saturn, da-da. Wow. And that's without me even looking at your chart wow. or looking at the five page questionnaire that I generally send yeah. for a medical reading. Right. And the reason why it's so much is because I include questions I would ask if I was a nurse. I include questions I would, uh, I would ask if I was an Ayurvedic practitioner. I've done both. So I throw it, the questionnaire is, is devised in such a way where, um, the body is like a car. Just because something is wrong with the car doesn't mean it's wrong at that point. Mm -hmm. It could be wrong somewhere else in the car, and the body is the same. Right. So you with your um, inflammation in the joints, where is that coming from? Is it coming from the diet? So I look to the moon or to the sixth house, and if it's high, if it's high fire, for example, then that could be an indication of someone who's got dehydration, which can lead to... Um, um, problem with joints mm -hmm. because the joints are not lubricated because you've got a lot of fire in your chart you've got a lot of dehydration in your chart <laughs> when i teach this course when i teach a course called um your blueprint of health which i do around the country um the three main causes of ill health in my opinion are inflammation dehydration and fermentation those three things are the main causes for health problems, mm. in my wow. opinion. Yeah. So tell me the Ayurveda side of, of this. Does yep. it support, I mean, I can only see that because I I actually, I, I had, was on an Ayurvedic diet for a long time. I got a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis in, in, 20, in 2013. Were you on the anti-pitta diet? Um, I can't remember. I can't remember what he called it, but I was on a diet where I had to take all processed food out, um, anything, just, you know, increase water, take out the coffee, all yep. of that, yep. just eat green vegetables more, mm. not not so much rice, reduce sugar completely, yep. you know, that kind of thing. That's, rice, in, rice increases heat in the body, which increases dehydration, does. which increases inflammation. Yes, definitely. Hmm. And um, so, so I, I did that for a while and I still live by some of the principles because, you know, sort of come out of that now. But um, I, I, f I feel like Ayurveda is so closely connected with understanding the body, even from an astrological perspective. Do you think that's right? I agree. And I'll tell you why. Ayurveda is uh, 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 the function of, of Ayurveda is on the element theory. So they look at the elements and yes. then you've got the Vata, Pitta, Kapha. And if you've got all three doshas, which is like the body constitution and balance, you're caught, it's called a tri, your tridoshic. Astrology, again, is um, looked at on the element theory, fire, air, water and earth. Yes. And a balanced chart is a balance of all those elements, although it's very rare to find it. That's right. It is rare. So where find. you have an imbalance in Ayurveda, in the um, fire, air, water, kapha, earth, and ether, the five elements, yes. Ayurveda, yes. where there is an imbalance, and by an imbalance, I mean you have too much of something, yes. which means something can be overacting or not enough of something, where you've got something underactive. You flip that over to astrology and you look at the four elements, which we mentioned earlier, if you have got high of something, something is overstimulated. And again, something is low of something, it is understimulated. So you can blend the two. And I often do that. Yeah. If I if I if I have if I've got somebody who is looking for a bit of an Ayurvedic perspective and are looking for a little bit of Ayurveda treatments, then I go down the roads of um the foods, Ayurvedic practices, all those kinds of things. And I outline the Ayurvedic stuff quite succinctly in my in the second chapter of this book learn to self-heal yeah. and um even though most people are their dosha the way i've written the chapter it's designed for anybody to to um use that information and the recipes 
vegetarian recipes that are inside are also for all dosha types. Mm, okay, okay, that's good. I think I have too much heat in my body. I am, you know. That will explain the arthritis. Yeah, and I am an Aries. Mars is the avatar of Aries. Yep. And, yes. you know, last year, you know, um, the North Node moved into Aries. I don't know where Mars was and what it was doing, but at the moment, Mars has moved into Aries since May, the beginning of, since last yes. year, Mars, Mars is Aries. now in its home. Now, Mars is happy in Aries. Yeah. It's in dom It's in its own, um, what we call yeah. domicile. So it's quite happy, you know. So I would use the energy of Mars with you being in Aries to get as much done in the five or six weeks that it takes before it moves into Taurus because that energy then for you will slow down. Yes. Because Mars is your sun ruler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's moved it's moved home. So you should be feeling very comfortable. So I would be also be adding things like um, increasing your fluids because Mars can be dry and also getting some exercise in because that keeps the physical part of Mars yes. quite happy. Mm, yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. Mm. So tell us how you work. I know you told us about you traveling around and you do workshops. Yeah. How would, if, if somebody, oh, if I wanted a reading, so how would I find you? I, I know you've got your website and we can talk about the website later, but just how the process works for the work you do. Well, I usually get a text. Um, I'm on Google. I'm on uh, in New Zealand. I'm on Trade Me, and as you know, I've got my own website. And basically, that's all the advertising I do. I do. I don't have a astrology Facebook page, but I do have a private Facebook page, Christina's Triple A, where I talk about astrology, Ayurveda, and authorship on a rotating monthly basis. Okay. And uh, you know, I'm open to whatever people want me to research or talk about. And you know, I do a lot of podcasts and I interview people and that kind of stuff. But I, but generally, how it works: somebody will ring me, or they will text me, or they'll contact me through my website, and they will say, "I would like to have um, a medical reading." Now, on my website, it's very clear that my medical consultations, what they are. And how that works. So what I do then is I send them my, if it's a medical thing, and most people come to me when they're in the middle of being sick, yeah. when they're unwell, right? So ideally that, I'm not saying that's not what medical astrology is for because it can help and it can give insight and often I can pick up on things that doctors may have missed. But the idea of medical of, of astrology is to know your body so well that you support the weaknesses in your body. So when they do get triggered by a planet, which is called a transit, and when you have a transit, you have an event or something that happens to you, then what happens in your body either is very minimal at, le at best, if it happens at all. Okay. So, um, so then um, I send them off my five page form, which is a combination of Ayurvedic, astrological and um, nursing questions that I would ask, but, you know, just very simple, but it helps me to understand the depth, the more information I have, the more I can understand where things are coming from. Like one of my questions is, um, what color is your tongue first thing in the morning? Now, a doctor wouldn't ask you that. Mm. Yeah. But if you tell me your tongue is white and fluffy first thing in the morning before you put anything in your mouth, eat, drink coffee, cigarettes, whatever, um, that is a warning sign to me that there's a digestion upset. You've probably got toxins in your body. Yeah. And if you are a fixed sign like a Scorpio or a Taurus, for example, then chances are you're not the, the fixed signs, Taurus, Scorpio, come on, Leo, and Aquarius, <laughs> they're not very good at getting rid of toxins. Yeah. Okay. So that's, you know, that's something I would be looking at. Yeah. Um, I ask if there's things like allergies because I don't want to be recommending um, supplements that they may have a reaction or allergic to. Mm -hmm. I yeah. ask them how they sleep. When okay. you wake up in the morning, do you feel refreshed or do you still feel tired? If they are telling me that they are feeling tired, that tells me, that, one, they're not sleeping properly. Yeah. Which means their body's not healing at night between the hours of two and four. Yeah. You know, like I ask all the relevant questions. And so I send it all off. They send it all back. And then um, they usually, then I start doing the report based on what I have got. Okay. Um, and on my website, you can get the full astrology package, which is the ultimate 
or you can get the preventative package, which is a bit, um, you know, 160 bucks or whatever it is. But anyway, then the, I just look at anything preventative or if you've got a condition in particular that you would like to look at holistically, then I focus on that. And that's a separate thing. So I send it all back. And if they take the ultimate package, then once they get their report back, what else is included is not only do they get a copy of my book um, by email, but they also get a, a half hour session with me, which is included in the price for them to go through any questions they might have, anything they might want to raise, any concerns, that kind of thing. So they get okay. that included, which they don't get with the other two. The other okay. two just get the report. Right. That's good. It's quite, it, I have to say, I'm quite boggled at astrologers and how the my, their mind works. Because, I mean, I, I can't follow the astrology sometimes with all these. And it's not to say that what you're speaking about, like the explanation isn't clear. It's just that it's, it's a lot of information to take. It's almost like you've got to have the, the mathematical mind and you've got to have, I don't this know, whatever why, else. When it comes to medical astrology, I do the report. Okay. They can go over it. And especially if I'm looking at time frames, so when certain months are coming up, they can go back and look at what I've recommended for that month. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because astrology is like an onion. You think you got it, and then there is another layer. Uh -huh. and, I, and for example, when I'm looking at someone's chart, I'm not just looking at the birth chart. I can look it up to six different charts in order for me to collect the information that I need to assimilate it in a way where I can give it back to the client and so they get the best possible information which is specific for what's going on for them. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very important. I mean, we listen to astrology, but it, it, to know what's how you're really going to be affected personally, it's important to, to have that someone look at it specifically to the birth chart. Obviously, mm. no other way, right? That's what that's what the, the astrologer is going to look at well that's what an astrologer will look at and exactly. obviously ideally um a, a time of birth is um very important in all astrology practices but in particularly medical astrology because yeah. the time of birth gives you the first house which is the house of vitality okay so that first house you know and of course the chart moves every four minutes yeah so if you're out by you know x amount of, you know a few hours or whatever it can completely change the aspects will still be the same but the houses shift and of course okay. as much as the aspects tell the story so do the planets in the houses because the houses in medical astrology rule body systems right. so if you are out by um a big barrage of time then um the interpretation i can only do what i'm given with like mm. if the information is not correct, yeah. then the information I'm giving you is not is not wrong, but it might be incorrect yes. or not appropriate yeah. for the person if I don't have a right birth time. Yeah, very important to have the right birth time. Mm. So, you know, I, I know we've talked and, and it, it, probably the answers are obvious, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So when do people come to you? When do they feel? I know you said earlier you were saying something about them in you know when they are in the middle of being sick yeah usually but but what what possesses them to think i need to go to a medical astrologer rather than going to uh maybe another doctor because they, obviously they would have been to a doctor but now what have you found are the co common factors that bring people to you okay the first thing is the big one is they come when they're sick they're um on the whole they're sick of taking tablets after tablets after tablets and it's not making any difference so and sometimes they do have a second opinion but for when i look at a chart i'm not just looking at it medically i'm also looking at it spiritually so it's like you know what else do you need to do on a soul level to help your body heal because when i in this book learn to self heal heal i talk about in the introductory that our energy field or our spirit field excuse me is directly connected to our physical body through the nadi system or the um 
central nervous system, which is one and the same. Like, yeah. You know, so that's how we're connected, and we actually get sick from the outside in, not necessarily from the inside out. It manifests from the inside. Okay. And of course, then I might, if I, I might see something um, in childhood, and I might go. Um, now, I might see something, say, around um, a girl's relationship with her father. And she's come to me with um, some kind of, um, oh, no, let's do the mother. It's a bit easier. And then she comes to me with a digestive issue. Okay. okay any kind of digestive problem. Uh, Louise Hay uh, talks about not being able, the great Louise Hay. I'm sure some of you she will know her. She is the great Louise Hay. Um, so uh, not digestive issues is um not being able to digest what's going on in the world but it's also related to the mother okay or, or the nurturing or the lack of nurturing so i look for that in the chart so sometimes they don't come out and say it but then i'll say to them well you know how's your relationship with your mother and they'll say oh, look it's not a very good relationship and that's ongoing and then i say to them look i can help you to do all the practical things that you need to become better for you to become totally well you need to deal out the contract you have made with your mother and you've chosen her as your as your mother and when i realized we chose our parents i went <laughs> oh my god what, what did I, I ever do to deserve that <laughs> but i got over that yeah and then i came back to it and it was like you know the people who challenge you are the ones that help you to grow. And exactly. that's what it is about. Yes. Whether they grow as a, as a consequence of the contract, it's not your responsibility, but your responsibility is the fact that you grow. So I will talk to, I talk to her about her mother and I say, look, you need to find a way where you can become, where, where you can deal out the situation and still be in your own power and if her energy is still harming, then you need to practice loving detachment yeah. because your health is everything and you are in charge of that health. <laughs> Not what happened to you when you were a kid because you're a grown adult now and you are making your own choices. It's okay to make yeah. the wrong choice or the right choice. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day because it all, it's all going to come back around. Yeah. So I ask people, do you want to be pain free? Do you want to live a healthy life? Do you want to be happy with your health? Do you do you want your function? Do you want your body to function well? You need and if that is a yes, then there are things that you need to do. Yeah. And if it's a no, if you just want a band-aid problem, then just continue going to your GP. Yeah. Some of them will get to some of them will get to the crux of it. But people are not going to ask you, what's the relationship like with your mother if you're coming in with, with a condition which could be contributed in part to the relationship that you have? Yeah. Because all these things are interconnected. Yeah. And yeah. when I see a chart, that's what I see. I don't yeah. just purely see the physical. That's really good. It's good to know. I, I didn't know there was something called medical astrology before you and I spoke. And, I, and, and then... When you've explained it over the, well, you've explained it a few times, it makes so much sense. It's like, you know, you have the base, which is astrology, and then there's all these other facets. And, you know, there, I'm sure there are astrologers that can help you with everything, but it makes sense that someone might choose to focus on one type of astrology because all they, all that they they are contributes to that. That's what they intend, that, that was what they're here to do. And that's all that's what you do so that's really awesome mm. um so i'm just looking through my questions because i need to make sure that i've asked you everything i think it's been a really lovely conversation by the way and just you. you're so interesting you're such an interesting person and you've got so much to share and i always say that you know often when people say oh this is happening and that looks like it could be a conspiracy it looks like um it may not be the case. I, I always go back to saying to them, every time I'm in doubt of something, I check out what the astrologers are saying. Because if the astrology can match it, chances are it's happening. You mm. know? So, yeah. Tell us then anything else that you think I need, that, that I haven't asked you. Tell us anything more that I haven't asked you, please. 
I'm just answering the questions as they come as they come along. There've been some good questions. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, not... sometimes sometimes I need to I, I myself need to put some boundaries in place because I can talk about astrology for hours. That's okay. Actually, I have done. <laughs> That's okay. And why I ask I ask all my guests these questions because right. I ask, hey, is there anything else you want to tell us that I didn't ask you? I found that when I came across astrology, it actually turned my life around. Yeah. from where I was to where I am now yeah and it gave me the answers that I not that I was looking for answers but it, it helped me to understand everything that happened to me yeah. and as I got more into the spiritual aspect of and there is spiritual astrology by the way but the more I got into the spiritual aspects of life it helped you know they started to integrate those things it just kind of made sense and i kind of use both like when i'm doing a chart i open myself up as a channel yeah medical astrology is very um fact finding but sometimes when i'm doing other things like i might be doing a relationship question or something like this and i'm reading the chart and then i'm going okay then things will start coming through yeah. and uh, i listen to it and then I just write it down and then I forget about it because it's got nothing to do with me or I'll hand it over to the person in session and they'll go oh my god how did you pick that up and I just said like I just got told and then we move on and I don't make a big thing about it and they don't tend to make a big thing about it because when I get a message I know those messages are not for me yeah. but for me astrology helped me put the pieces together and when it comes to strengthening the body which is something that i do now and i'm in my 60s now oh my god i'm nearly in my mid 60s now oh my goodness what's my in the birthdays. water you're drinking because i wouldn't have said that <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday's in november um then um and, or, or you could say i'm a year off retirement so either way <laughs> it's like whoa um i'm telling you as i've gotten older and of course we become unwell as we get older i'm more unwell we can become unwell at any time in our life i look at oh my god this is coming up so you know this part this system is going to be under threat so i need to boost that up for one month two months six months yes. or whatever you know mm -hmm. it's not that i still don't get that odd symptom but my body is more prepared to fight the battle yes, yes. yeah yeah, yeah. That exactly. is what preventative medicine is all about. Yeah. Identifying your weaknesses, knowing what you can do on a daily basis. I believe good health needs to be practiced daily. Yes. Not just, oh, I'm sick now, I better go to the doctor. Like, you know, that can actually be prevented. Um, and good health practices, which is what I try to teach in my courses, um, is the thing that is going to keep you um, well and healthy. Yes. throughout life and i and i also believe just because we age i don't believe that we have to break our hips and go into homes and suffer with bowel problems and yeah. lung problems and all the yeah. rest of it you yeah, know exactly exactly it can be different we can age differently we can that's what i like about the preventative um that's model right. yeah and yeah. with pluto planet pluto move although it's coming back into Capricorn for one degree before it moves on again. Yeah. But play, once Pluto really kicks in in 2025, um, then Pluto in Aquarius is um, looking at um, things um, in a higher level, higher vibrational level. And of course, Aquarius rules astrology. Yeah. And one of the things that I would love and it is funny. Um, the Hippocratic Oath, um, father of medicine, Hippocrates, he was born in Kos in Greece. He was a medical, he was an astrologer. He noted wow. the moon cycles. <laughs> and, and it's the one thing they don't practice in medicine. And I would love it that by the end of Pluto leaving Aquarius in 2040, so there's roughly, I mean, it's already been dipping in and out, That's but right. for many yeah. years. Yeah. I would love to think that medical astrology comes back into the medical curriculum. Oh, I just, I just so I would love that support what you just said. I just it'll be, love it. It'll be out of my time. Absolutely. You know, I'll be living it out in Greece somewhere probably, but it'll be <laughs> out of my time. But I think for the generations coming up behind us, yeah. and there's a generation every 20 years approximately. 
Yes. Um, the, the bodies are wired differently. I mean, one in four people are on the autistic spectrum. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that includes me. Yeah. I'm dyslexic. It's yeah. a sub. It's a sub thing of autism. Yeah. So, with one in four people, and that that number is getting less and less. Their bodies are different. Their bodies are more sensitive. Their minds are different. They the food they can't eat whatever what you used to eat in your sixties to what you're eating now. Sure, foods yeah. are different, but they can't eat either what our grandparents had. And I feel that with um with things moving into Aquarius here, that um the alternative medicines like um medical astrology um like um esoteric medicine um vibrational medicine sound medicine yeah, uh, these are the medicines that are yeah. going to make a difference in the future and i'm That's not right. saying that conservative medicine is not going to be important it's important when you have trauma when you have accidents you know it's still very important but i feel that there needs to be a combination of both Absolutely. And I that, and I like and I'm not a surgeon, although I've worked with many, um, but and, and I like to think that that is where we are, uh, where we end up as a human species, where it comes to our health and our growth. That is very hopeful, and that is what my hope is too, because we, they all have equal value. It's not one over the other; hmm. it's equal value, holistic equal value. We can use all of I those like things. That. Holistic we, equal value. Yeah. And, and we get all of those things are beneficial for all of us. Mm. So I love that. And I love that dream. I'd love that you said it like that. That's just perfect. So Christina, I um, want to ask you to tell us about, I, I know you said you've got an upcoming workshop. You tell us about yes. that workshop and then tell us where you can be contacted. Okay. So I am teaching, I've been teaching with the Astrology Collective. Um, based in Australia, they have over, I think it's 2,000 membership or something worldwide. Uh, I've been teaching medical astrology level one with the Astrology Collective for the last three years. So this year I'm doing a level one followed by a level two. Okay. So um, that starts on the 18th of May. And if you Google the Astrology Collective and connect yourself with Zane, or Lynette, if you are interested, um, then um, you'll be getting me as your teacher, and I'll be teaching you about your about medical astrology. And of course, um, you, I bring everything back to your own chart. Yeah, ideally, you need to have a basic a basic knowledge of astrology. Yeah. Okay. I because I'm not teaching astrology; I'm teaching medical astrology, which is a level up. Yeah. Um, so um, that's that and that is going on for eight weeks and that's going to be followed up with a level two which will also be followed up eight weeks and it's online yeah and um, on the days that I'm connecting with students it's usually um, on a Saturday or a Sunday and there's usually two time slots so I can catch the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere at different times okay yeah Great. and if you happen to be in New Zealand um, at the end of the month, I'm off to Palmy, Palmerston North, and I'm doing Blueprint for Your Health, which is a particular workshop where I look at um, health. That includes um, health, the chakra system, how, how to fix the astrology, the planets, what they um, rule, body systems, and what you can do. And then I bring it back to the, everyone's chart in their um in their in the class where i get everyone to look at their sun moon ascendant and the planet saturn saturn right. is where you hold your blocks yeah. so wherever you've got a block that is a place that you need to strengthen and saturn is an indicator of that so that's coming up at the end of um, may and then i've got another one in october in wanganui and another one september in wellington and then next year 2025 i'm planning to take the course down to the south island oh wonderful <laughs> That's great. So my website is www.christinarishtaauthor.com. Yep. Okay. And my Facebook page is astroplus.co.nz. That's astro with an A, not an E. And that's my um, Facebook and my Instagram. Wonderful. And my, and my books, this particular one, Learn to Self Heal, it's got four sections. Little bit of medical astrology in the front, not much, just to the signs. 
and it's got everything in there for their recommendations from exercise to their Ayurvedic constitution, from crystals to color to nutrition, etc. Wow. Second section is on Ayurveda. The third section is on spiritual health. And the fourth section, I've contacted a lot of my colleagues worldwide and I've asked them to talk about why their modality works. Ah. Not if it's important, because I believe all modalities are important. It's nice having a bit of a, a cheese platter to sort of pick what you need and how yeah. you need it. And then this one here is your astrological health. And this is the book that is recommended to purchase um, from Amazon, or you can purchase it from the Astrology Collective uh, through, through their website. Um, and I talk about the signs in here. But it's a lot more extensive. There's also case studies in here that I've done. So there's, mm. case, there's 12 case studies. And each sign covers the profile, uh, the case study, which is about a page, and what I did in that case study. Um, body organs, how to overcome stress, aromatherapy, Ayurveda, bark flowers, chakras, color, crystals, herbs, minerals, nutrition, tissue salts, vitamins, and mantras and a little bit of um, uh, best number for the day, you know, for the numerology and stuff. So that's about 30 pages on each sign, which is quite wow, a bit. So if you're looking yeah. at your sun and moon and your ascendant, that's a third of the book that you're looking yeah. at. Wow. And okay. then at the back, at the back, I've got a section called for the advanced astrologer. And I wrote this because I had people keep saying to me, like, how do you do the medical astrology? Yeah. I mean, Understanding medical astrology is one thing, but I give my process on how I break down a chart medically and what I do. Wow. Now, That's everybody does it different. Valuable. Everybody does it different. But yeah. that is the way, um, you know, and, you know, there are some great medical astrologers out there. I've studied under some of them. Yeah. And, um, you know, they all do it a little bit differently. But that's, in a nutshell, that's how I do it. And I don't use huge medical language which is easy for me to get into because of, because of my background. Yeah. It's very simple. So I've had people that have bought the books that have literally read it in a day. Wow. That's awesome. Because it's been really, really easy to read. Yeah. So um, read the reviews on um, Amazon. And please, if you purchase, do write a review because, you know, um, I feel the book really does serve um, a lot of the people. And the more people that support the book, then the more people will get the support from the book when they yeah. purchase yeah i mean it's an active thing you're not just buying a book you're buying something that's going to support you through throughout yes. your life really yes yeah exactly well thank you very much we were going to go thank to you rose you been... went to it naturally and i love that it's such a pleasure to have the conversation with somebody who's just mm -hmm. flowing like that i love thank you for inviting me it's been my pleasure to be here well you're very welcome again please it'll be wonderful for us to talk again and we might talk about that some more after we get, get off the week. Just give me a text. Yeah, <laughs> give me a topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love your energy. It's so beautiful. Thank you Thank for you. that. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And yes, we'll catch you next time here on The Great Awakening Generator. And take care of all of you, yourselves, and keep reaching for the stars, as I always say. <laughs> Thank you. Bye -bye. Follow me on follow me on Instagram if you want to be up to date on what's happening daily with the stars. Number and we'll put yeah. Thank you. Sorry for interruption. We'll put everything, all the details in the description box for Christina, so you can find it. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. Bye bye. Namaste.